Welcome to Reigniting You, the show that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making successful mid to late career transitions with a renewed sense of purpose and fulfillment for the next phase of your career and life, regardless of your age. Now, here's your host, Lisa Downs. Welcome to Reigniting You, where we talk all things career transition for those age 40 plus. I'm Lisa Down, Seattle-based career and retirement transition coach. It's great to be with all of you today and with our producer, Eric. Hey, Eric. Good afternoon, Lisa. Great to see you again. I know we've got a great show lined up today. Yeah, very exciting. So we have our first guest interview today. So that should be awesome. So we'll hear from our guest here in a little while. Uh, my guest today is Charlie McGee of FranNet of Washington, who's here to share his career transition story and how franchise ownership can be a potential career move. And we'll hear more from Charlie right after this quick break. Climbing the corporate ladder used to lead to success and a satisfying retirement. That ladder is now broken. You want to succeed today. Stop playing by yesterday's rules. Five out of six millionaires started their own business. Now you can too. Introducing FranNet, your local franchise resource. With enough franchise options to fill CenturyLink Field, FranNet will help you find the right fit to realize your dream of being your own boss in a successful business. Be in business for yourself, not by yourself. Charlie McGee can help. Learn more at friendnet.com. Are you feeling challenged or frustrated without a plan for what's next in your career and life? Are you seeing writings on the wall for needing to make a mid to late career change and don't know how or what to do? Coach Lisa Downs of New Aspect Coaching can guide you to what's next, providing a fresh perspective and supporting you to create a clear and compelling vision for your future and a plan to move forward. Call Lisa at 425-216-3015. That's 425-216. 163015 New Aspect Coaching Fresh Perspectives for Your Career Make us part of your daily routine Alternative Talk 1150 Welcome back to Reigniting You a new show that focuses on all aspects of making mid to late career transitions a big thank you to our sponsor, FranNet, your franchise experts. And speaking of FranNet, I'm really happy to introduce Charlie McGee to the show. He's the managing partner of FranNet of Washington, a local consulting firm advising individuals in career transition on franchise ownership. And before starting his entrepreneurial journey eight years ago, Charlie spent over 20 years with Pearl Vision and Sonus Hearing Care in store operations, training, and franchise development. He and his wife, Katie, are nearly empty nesters after raising two kids in Snohomish County here in Washington State. And his dream is to build a three-hole golf course. His family and friends will enjoy playing together for the rest of their lives. That's pretty cool. Hi, Charlie. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Lisa. Great to be with you. So um, got a few questions here for us just to kick things off. And, uh, you know, you and I have known each other for a couple years now. And know some information about each other, but would love to know what's been your career path that led you to FranNet and, you know, different career transitions that you've made over the years. You bet. Well, I, I would, if I had to choose one word for my career path so far, I would say adventure, uh, because it's certainly been one. I've, I, if I, I can kind of break it into maybe three different phases is, you know, the early years uh, when I was trying to figure out you know, who I was, what I wanted to do. Um, and when I say early, I mean early, like when I was throwing newspapers and doing yard work and <laughs> selling books door to door and, and uh, coaching at soccer camps and this sort of thing. Um, when I started, when I graduated from college and I started with Pearl Vision, I remember calling my dad one time and telling him, you know what, I think I have found the perfect job. I remember feeling so... Uh, perfectly aligned with what I was doing. And that feeling really lasted a long time. I ended up spending 17 years at Pearl 
in operations, as a national trainer, as a very successful regional manager for 10 years. And then I got my first taste of uh, job transition. Uh, it was 2008. Uh, that those were those that experienced the Great Recession. Um, yep. You know, I did too. And so despite having this marvelous uh, trophy case of awards and a stack of files of wonderful reviews, I found myself displaced. And uh, I figured out I needed to, well, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I had always had this idea of doing something on my own. And I got involved in a professional practice brokerage for a couple of years. So I got a little taste of it. But those were very difficult times financially mm -hmm. and lending and so forth. I got lured back into a corporate W-2 job um, where I, I learned a lot. But it was it reminded me of how much I really needed to be on my own. And after experiencing that for, you know, not quite three years, but uh, went through about five different bosses and you know, one day my number was up. And at that point, I said, you know, with two younger kids in the house and having given up so much in terms of travel and in an effort to build security for the family, which I had not accomplished doing, I had learned a lot I, and no one could take that away. Yeah. I thought this is the time when I need to do something more independent. Well, that's, that's and, great. Uh, and, um, and yeah, I, definitely hear you about, you know, that great recession time was hard for a lot of people. And, um, and it's, you know, I think similarly here, you know, a lot of folks right now going through some tough times as well, and not exactly years, you, you know, we, we want to relive necessarily, but, um, but thanks for sharing that. And that's great to hear, especially after such a long tenure in one place, and then making those changes, making that transition to where you are now, it's really helpful. And, I'm curious about a lesson or two, you know, you said you've learned a lot along the way and what's a lesson or two that you've learned if, as you went through this transition and, um, you know, now with this focus of your work with franchising? Well, I think one of the lessons, Lisa, is to not forget to have fun, uh, not to forget to enjoy what you're doing. It's a, a life moves really fast and uh, you don't get the time back. And so I'd say that's one thing. I, I, when I left Finally Corporate, I, had, I didn't have a sense of how much of a pain tolerance I had developed mm -hmm. uh, to put up with um, you, you know, the sorts of things that I did. So I think that's one really important lesson. I think you know, I can relate something to kind of what I've, my wife and I have always told our kids too with their involvement with sports is, you know, as long as you're having fun and as long as you're getting better at what you're doing, we will support you 100%. And I think that, that that same mentality of, you know, taking every day, um, learning something new and applying it to what you're doing so that you're getting better at it um, is, you know, absolutely critical, whether you're, in, you know, continuing a job career path or if you're doing something more uh, on your own. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. And, and I tend to ascribe to that too, in terms of just, just trying to have fun, right. Enjoy things and, you know, deal with things as they come. And, and it's, it's not easy. You know, there are definitely days when it's, it's harder than others. And um, really appreciate your sharing that as well, because yeah, sometimes that, you know, it can be difficult to keep that in mind or, or be positive and take a positive approach when so many times that's what really helps us get through different changes and transitions. And, you know, that's such a great positive outlook to have. And, and, um, I know for me, I mean, you and I have laughed together quite a bit and, uh, you know, laughter is important, uh, for sure. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and what do you think, what else uh, was particularly helpful for you that got you through times of change, um, whether it was other actions you took or skills you developed or people who supported you? Well, I'll start with people who supported me. And number one on that is my wife. Um, she just, I always felt her total belief and confidence in me, even at times when my own confidence was a little shaken, you know, I felt like I'd had a, 
you know, a, a continuous lifelong win streak until I lost the job in 2008. And then I was just, you know, it was a total paradigm shift. Um, so that was invaluable. Um, and, you know, I, I think for all of us in our careers, if you're in transition, if you're still working, if you're, if you have a business and are trying to navigate these uncertain times, um, you know, a belief in yourself and a commitment to uh, keeping your values regardless of the circumstances is uh, paramount. I would say also that through those various um, shifts, some basic core competencies that I learned and, and worked diligently to improve along the way, things like performance management, uh, consultative selling, uh, coaching, um, just developing a general business acumen um, has been invaluable uh, in my, in the entrepreneurial chapter of my life, which I'm in now and have been in for the last eight years. So I, I would summarize just by saying, learn, 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 yeah. and surround yourself with people that believe in you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And yeah, I, I agree. It's as someone who's you know, been a lifelong learner. I, I think, you know, when we go through times of change and transition, it's, it can be painful and awkward and, and, you know, we can lose our confidence at times, but yet it's also that time of great learning and opportunity to do new things and learn new skills, no matter our age. So I, I really appreciate your sharing that as well. So thanks so much, Charlie. We're going to go ahead and take our next break. And when we come back, we'll talk more with Charlie McGee of FranNet about franchising. Hi, I'm Lisa Downs, career and retirement transition coach and host of Reigniting You on KKNW. I guide age 40 plus professionals to gain clarity, a renewed sense of purpose, and a career transition plan within 90 days so you can lead a fulfilling life regardless of your age. No longer does change have to mean riding off into the proverbial sunset. Let's talk about what your next phase of life can look like. Visit yournewaspect.com or call me at 425-216-3015. That's 425-216-3015. New Aspect Coaching, fresh perspectives for your career. Have a career transition related question or want to share your best or worst job story? Call 360-436-6496. That's 360-436-6496. Just leave a voicemail and we'll answer your question or share your story on a future show. Stay tuned for more Reigniting You with Lisa Downs. Wherever you go, Alternative Talk 1150 is here for you. Welcome back to Reigniting You, a new show that discusses timely issues and topics about career transitions for Gen Xers and Boomers. I'm your host, Lisa Downs. We're here with Charlie McGee of Franet of Washington. So Charlie, let's go ahead and dive right back in. And for those who are considering being an entrepreneur as a career change or, you know, have always wanted to own their own business, something that they've dreamed about over the years, um, what are some of the key things they need to keep in mind or that you'd recommend that they get clarity on? A great question, Lisa. I think the number one thing is to spend some time really understanding, reflecting on, and clarifying what is it that you're trying to accomplish through business ownership? Um, and I would say this, you know, the, the role is, um, what you're trying to do is manage risk. Um, there's risks to starting businesses, there are risks to buying businesses, and there are risks to franchising. Um, but the clearer you can be about what role uh, you're going to play in the business. You know, what's a day in the life look like? Um, your goals for the business, and I don't just mean financial. Uh, what do you want in, for the rest of your life? How will it impact your family? Um, and then being um, realistic, um, 
conservative even um, with regard to your financial readiness. Um, uh, really having a good sense of your budget um, and so that you could put yourself in a position to safely uh, launch a business and be as efficient as you can managing those risks. Sure. And, and just to follow up on that, um, from what you just shared, what are some of the risks that, that you've seen over time or as you've worked with clients? So some, maybe some of the, the initial mistakes that they might make. Well, I, I like to think that we're, um, by working with me, the clients have a, a good sense of um, the, what they're, the skills that they're going to need to have to successfully launch the business. And what I mean by that is that uh, what comes up so often, particularly in the Puget Sound area, are people that have technical backgrounds that then want to go into a sales-driven business. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't had a sales background, then you need to really have a good understanding of where are your customers going to come from. Is it an inbound uh, a passive retail model? Is it more of an outbound B2B relationship building model? And so that's one of the things that we do to help, help people understand. Um, the other thing is that just for any business is getting a sense of what, how the business is going to launch, how it's going to ramp, how long it would take to get to a positive cash flow position, and ensuring that the household income and the resources of that prospective franchisee are appropriate for what will be likely required. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and always leaving a, a little extra room for the just in case, uh, you know, life happens scenario. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And all great points. I know for me when I, so I, I first went independent full time five years ago and, you know, it's taken me a while just to figure some of those things out. And, you know, especially your point about when you've got a certain technical skill set or you're great at what you do, you know, sometimes that doesn't necessarily transfer into being great at sales or marketing. And, and so either getting help with that or, or ways to figure that out is, is really critical. So thanks for that as well. And what would you say are some of the benefits of being a franchise owner as opposed to starting a business from scratch? Well, I think there's a few things. Um, one of them that comes to mind immediately is, is a higher success rate. Um, startup businesses overall have the lowest uh, success rate as measured by the SBA um, and franchises have the highest. So that's kind of number one. Um, I think another reason that people choose to do it is because the systems and the processes and the branding are all in place, it enables an, a, a franchisee who has strengths in implementation and execution to ramp the business up uh, much more quickly and get to scale faster than they would if they were doing something on their own. Um, and I think another, and this is more important for some people than others, but the community that you enjoy uh, as a franchisee with fellow owners facing similar challenges um, in your market and in other parts of the country can be an enormous uh, benefit and uh, uh, and is useful. Mm -hmm. Great. And then, you know, on the flip side of that, what would you say are some downsides of franchise ownership as opposed to just striking out on your own? Well, you know, there are those, Lisa, who are, you know, we call serial entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who love, you know, they never met a rule book that they liked. Uh, they want to do things on their own, their own way. Um, they're willing to take the uh, risks that are involved in doing so. And, uh, it, you know, compliance is not necessarily um, uh, a strength. So mm -hmm. if you are, if you don't see the value and appreciate uh, the benefits of um, consistent customer experience and uh, uh, branding execution and so forth, then, you know, it, it may not be, uh, you know, the best flavor for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get that. And, you know, it was funny when, um, I was first considering 
going independent, I, I spent quite a bit of time. Uh, oh, well, I don't, I don't think my last corporate employer really knew what I was up to. Hopefully not. But, but I, spent, I spent quite a bit of time talking to a number of people who'd been on their own for a while and, and in the people development industry where I come from. And, and uh, a few of them said, you know, you're going to think two things when you go independent. The first is, I should have done this a long time ago. And the second is, I will now make a horrible employee. So, and <laughs> it's like, yep. <laughs> so I, feel I, think, I feel ruined to ever go work. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I get that, you know, and, and about the, the rule thing too. And it's like, not that I don't follow the rules, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good girl from that perspective. But now I think about working for someone else again. And it's like, oh, kind of gives me that. A uh, bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. So, and, you know, I, I don't yeah. mean to suggest that as a franchisee, you are working for the franchisor. You're not. Mm -hmm. You are your own um, independent uh, business owner, but with a partner. I think the best way to look at the franchisor is as a partner. Yeah. And um, uh, so, anyway, I just thought I'd add that. Oh, that's great. That's, that's a great point. And, and I think that's what, um, you know, it's really about is forming partnerships. And um, even though you may be uh, the owner or you may be, you know, independent, it doesn't mean that you necessarily, that it's a great strategy to completely go, go it alone for everything. So, you know, partnerships, I think, are really critical as well. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up too. And for you in your role, uh, what's your specific role in supporting people who want to be a franchisee? Yeah, thanks. The you know, we, FranNet uh, that I'm with has been doing this for 30 years. They've been a marvelous um, group to be associated with. It's a franchise, as a matter of fact, and uh, and I've learned a lot from from some great people that have been doing it a long time. So we have a, a, a process and um, my role is initially with someone that raises their hand saying, you know, I have an entrepreneurial itch I'd like to scratch. I, I'm in a, a career transition time in my life and maybe, maybe it's something to explore. So my role is to help uh, uh, them with assessment, uh, assess their readiness and um, we have a, a proprietary tool we've used for many years called a personal franchise assessment, which kind of uncovers their entrepreneurial DNA. You know, from there, we work together to really clarify their goals, um, their uh, personal finances, uh, to understand, you know, what would be an appropriate budget for making an investment should they find something that's a good fit. And what's the role that they want to play in the business? Um, are they looking for something... You know, maybe they have a few different irons in the fire um, and they're looking for something more part-time. Uh, maybe they are ready to go all in full-time on the business in more of a, an executive role. Um, so we figured those things out first, you know, diagnose before you prescribe. I love when people ask me, hey, Charlie, what's the hot franchise? And it's the <laughs> first question. And I, I always want to say, well, you know, if you're really serious about this, let's Let's kind of figure out what the right thing for you is first. So that's the matchmaking piece uh, based on all of the different options out there. Um, where might you be a best fit? Who are the franchisors that are looking for people with your strengths and your background? Um, and then advising them through the due diligence process so that they, you know, are asking the right questions um, and put themselves in a position to really make a, a confident fact-based decision about you know, whether now is the right time for them to start their entrepreneurial journey and whether they found the concept that, you know, really is the best fit. Yeah. And just to follow up with that. Um, so, you know, when I think, lots of times when I think about franchises, I think of fast food. So I, I think of, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Dairy Queen, et cetera. Um, what are the, the, what's the range of the types of businesses that people can go into franchising with? Uh, that's a great question. And, you know, there are so many, um, there's so many different options. If you go to our, if, like at our website, frenet.com, um, there's a description of probably 80 different categories that where franchises can be found. Mm -hmm. um, 
things that uh, uh, serve other businesses, um, residential services. Speaking of residential services, I mean, this year with the pandemic, um, those businesses that have served the needs of homeowners um, are seeing some of their best, are, are, are having record years. Oh, wow. Um, because of what people are, you know, their home and they're noticing things that need to be done. And um, uh, so, so in, uh, that's one of the things that we do is try to help people focus on, you know, what are the businesses that are, that are need-based and are going to uh, perform well in uh, good times and bad. That's really cool. Nice. And so Charlie, for people to find you, if they're curious and want to learn more, how can they reach you? Well, I, for, you know, our website, frannet.com is a terrific uh, resource with lots of great information and education about franchising in general. Um, they can visit my page at frannet.com slash C McGee. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, and uh, if they'd like to do it the old-fashioned way and call me, they could at 360-489-2153. Um, would love to chat. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here, Charlie, and taking the plunge as my first guest for the show. Really appreciate it and your insights for our listeners. And as we wind down for the show for today, um, my rec recognition recommendation for you this week is to challenge yourself to get out of your comfort zone. Who's someone you can connect with? What's a role you can go for, whether for work or as a volunteer? How about learning something new? You know, you never know what great things and people you'll discover unless you take a look around and act. Thanks, Eric, for your support today, as always. Um, what's something that you gleaned from what Charlie shared earlier? That uh, franchises may be an option uh, if you're looking to try something new. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Very cool. Well, join us next Wednesday at 3 o'clock when we'll debut our episode focused on listener stories and insights for your best job, worst job. As a reminder, email your story to reignitingyou at gmail.com or call 360 436 to leave a voicemail with your first name and location so I can share it over the air, over audio. That's 360-436-6496 or email it to reignitingyou at gmail.com. Really want to hear, you know, what's the best job story you've got to share that's fun? What's a worst job story? So the opposite that's fun to share. And um, we'll go from there next week. So thanks for joining us and we'll talk to you next Wednesday on Reigniting You.